Whether you're getting ready for spring or you just need to inject some color into your space, these terracotta pots should fit the bill. Take a look and be sure to let me know which one is your favorite. Okay, let's jump right in. For this terracotta pot, I'm using this beautiful shade of purple called African Violet. One of the things I really like about painting on terracotta is that the colors really saturate and soak in well. On a side note, I switched to foam brushes partway through and they do give a superior finish. Here's our purple, now let's add some gold. This is a really nice deep gold. Don't forget to paint the top edge of the rim. And you may also want to paint the inside upper edge just in case your plant sits low enough that you can see that part of the pot. Purple and gold, nice royal colors. Time to add some embellishments. I picked up these fabric flowers at the dollar store and I'm attaching them using hot glue. I'm just going to apply them randomly, just uh, staggered here and there, and I'm not going to cover up all of the paint. So here is what the flowers look like on the pot. However, I decided after the fact that I didn't really like the wooden beads that were on the flowers and decided to instead replace them with something gold to match the trim. So I just removed the wooden beads from the flower and then replaced them with a gold gem. For my first attempt, I painted this terracotta pot using a color of acrylic paint called Cotton Candy. However, when I was all done painting it, I decided it was in fact too late for my flamingo pot, so I switched it up for Rose Shimmer. With a coat of white on the rim for contrast. These pink flamingo stickers are from the Dollar Tree, and I'm just adding a few of them onto my pot. I actually didn't realize they were 3D stickers until I put them on the pot, but that's okay, they still work. I have done most of my designs using small terracotta pots from the Dollar Tree. These designs can easily be upsized to use on whatever size pot you like. Most of these designs are more suited to indoor use, especially where I've used embellishments like this or like this. Painted pots will work better for outdoor use, however, I would suggest giving any of the painted pots an additional coating of a clear varnish before using in an outdoor setting. It's a good idea to spray both the inside and outside of the pot. Spray painted pots will stand up quite well outdoors, but I still suggest taking your plant pots in over the winter for extended longevity. This pot started out with a coat of gloss white spray paint. And I'm taking a bottle of gold mirror effect nail polish and we're going to just drizzle this on top of our painted pot. So you just want to get the nail polish running a little bit and then drip it over the surface of the painted pot. Unfortunately, this side didn't go quite the way I wanted it to. Let's see if this side goes a little more smoothly. That's what I was looking for. Perfect. This dries to a really nice finish and it's pretty durable. If you were to add a coat of clear gloss, you could definitely use this outside. The design is definitely nicest where the two areas overlapped. Because the pot is curved, you're going to get this sort of curvature effect. This pot has already been given a coat of white acrylic paint, and now we're going to add some pearl effects. Here is what the dried finish looks like with the pearl, and now we are going to add 
pearl stickers on top. These are just Dollar Tree stickers and they're nicely spaced and come off in strips so it makes them easy to apply and get them nice and even. For the very first and last one on the strip, I suggest you use a little dab of hot glue because although they're adhesive, they do have a tendency to just peel off over time. I added a second row to the bottom section of the rim and one more row on the bottom to make it complete. Let's start this pot off with a coat of metallic aquamarine. And to contrast that, I'm using just flat acrylic white on the top part. To amp up this terracotta pot, I'm using these leftover roses. These are foam roses, and they are left over from a Christmas cone tree that I did a while back. I'll link that video up for you as well. I'm attaching these to the rim of the pot using hot glue. If you wanted to do this design on a larger size planter, you could do one of two things. You could either go with a larger rose for the larger planter, or you could do multiple rows. If you had the same size of foam roses, you could do probably two rows or even three, depending on how large your planter was. First, this pot needs a coat of red acrylic paint on the bottom half. Any shade of red would do. The one that I used is just called Deep Red. And the rim of the pot gets a coat of black acrylic paint. To make my polka dots, I used this little seashell sticker. These are from Dollar Tree. And for this size of pot it was just the right size if you're using a larger pot choose your circle stencil accordingly there's lots of things to choose from at the Dollar Tree that would work perfectly for this so I just stuck the sticker on where I wanted my polka dot and then I traced around it using a pencil before you paint them on and this allows you to get all your polka dots so that they're nicely spaced To paint my polka dots, I'm using like a mandala dot method and I'm using a dowel that I pre-measured to make sure it was the same size as my polka dots. And then I'm just dipping it into white acrylic paint and pressing it onto the pot for a perfect little white circle. It makes much more even and round polka dots than if I had attempted to paint them by hand. For the areas near the top and the bottom where I drew on partial polka dots, I'm going to paint those by hand using a very small paintbrush. I also touched up any thin spots on my polka dots from dabbing them. And now we're going to add a little bit of ribbon for the final effect and I've just measured a piece long enough to go around the rim plus a little bit of extra for overlap. And we're going to just attach the ribbon using hot glue. And using the same ribbon, I just tied a regular bow, just like a same kind you do when you do your shoes. Then just snip the tail ends off at an angle. Add a little bit of hot glue and glue it on top of your ribbon on the rim. 
and that is a mini, mini terracotta pot. This one started out with a coat of black acrylic paint. So I'm using a sponge brush for this. And these are the colors of paint I'll be using. When you're doing a galaxy style look, you wanna not completely cover the black paint up. You wanna leave quite a bit of the black paint peeking through. And you're just gonna take your colors one at a time. I usually start with my blues and my purples. And you're just gonna dab them onto the pot. And then I use a paper towel to blot off any excess paint before you're starting on the next color. And then repeat the process with the next color. In this case, I'm using purple. And don't forget to blot in between colors. And my final color is gold. Here's what the colors look like. All done, minus the stars, which we're gonna add next. I'm starting out with a small amount of white acrylic paint and then adding a little bit of water to it, probably about 50-50. And then I'm just mixing it up using a wooden stir stick. For this part, you're going to need a toothbrush and we're going to dip the toothbrush into the white paint mixture and then you're going to tap it off and we're going to also blot it on some paper towel. And then you're just gonna flick the toothbrush over top of the pot and you're gonna magically have stars. That first one was actually a little bit thicker than I would like them to be, which means that I should have blotted just a little bit more. No worries, we'll try again on the next side. I didn't wanna lay it on the wet paint, so I'm actually flicking it from the side, which isn't really very helpful <laughs> for you guys to be able to see, but no worries. I'm gonna show you what it looks like when it's all done. So here's what the finished product looks like. That's my thick part there, but you can see as I went along, I got thinner and it really does look like a galaxy. Metallic blue topaz is the starting point for this pot. I'll be using these picks from the Dollar Tree. As you can see, these picks are a little bit too long for these pots. So I'm gonna use a small pair of wire cutters to trim them down to size. The little tin snips give it a pretty nice straight edge. And if you find your edge is not as perfectly straight as you want it, just go back in and give it another snip. And before gluing them in place, make sure that they're the right length. On second thoughts, I think I like them better this way. I'm using E6000 to attach the picks to the terracotta pot and press it into place on the terracotta pot, making sure your placement is even and your spacing between picks is even. Once I had all my picks glued on to the terracotta pot, I added some masking tape to hold it in place overnight while it dries. Once again, I'm starting off with a pot that's been coated in black acrylic paint and I'm adding a piece of paper underneath to catch any excess glitter because this one's going to have glitter. We're going to start by giving this little pot a coat of Mod Podge. And I'm going to be using this really beautiful black glitter that I picked up on Amazon. I'll link it below. I gave the pot a coat of Mod Podge and I tried to keep the Mod Podge a little bit heavier on the bottom of the pot and a little bit lighter towards the top. I opened up the large side of my glitter and dumped a whole bunch of glitter onto the bottom of the pot. And remember, we've got a piece of paper underneath, so no worries about any overflow. And then I switched over to the shaker side, but unfortunately my Mod Podge had mostly dried by then, so I had to reapply. And shake it again. Because we were smart enough to put a paper down first, we can just dump all that unused glitter right back into the container. At 
this pot started out with a coat of flat white acrylic paint and for this one I'm using a little bit larger size pot. After the white paint the next coat of paint is going to be this color shift in white flash. If you've never used color shift paints before they make a lot of different varieties and I'm kind of a big fan of them. Once it's all dry you can really see the nice iridescent colors playing off of it. And the reason that I went with this color is because I was trying to match to these clamshells that I picked up at the Dollar Tree at Easter time. I decided to also give it a coat of extreme glitter. The clamshells split in two and are perfect for embellishing. This is the direction that I'm going to be putting the shells onto the terracotta pot and you're going to need to attach these using E6000. I'm starting by putting just a little bit of E6000 along the top of the rim of the pot and along the bottom edge of the shell where it's going to touch the side of the pot. And then I placed the rim of the shell right over top of the rim of the pot so that it sort of rests on top of the edge of the pot. And I used a piece of masking tape to hold it in place while the E6000 dried. See how perfectly five of them fit exactly around this pot. Now we let it dry overnight. The two colors on the pot really play nicely off of the iridescent clamshells. And now it's time to deal with those holes on the top of the shells. These are half pearl stickers and they're perfect for this job. So first we cover up the hole on the clamshell and then we do the same on the shell without the hole so that they look the same. for those of you that love a beach theme. This is actually my car washing bucket with a plastic garbage bag inside because I'm going to be doing this one with spray paint and you're for sure going to want to wear gloves with this because you're using spray paint. My pot's already coated in gloss white spray paint and I'm using this little bamboo skewer to hold on to the pot. I'm using this turquoise Rust-Oleum Universal Metallic, which is one of my favorite colors, and this gold Rust-Oleum Metallic, another one of my favorite colors. And now I'm just gonna add my spray paint uh, to the water surface, and I'm just gonna spray a little of each until I get enough in there to cover my pot probably wouldn't have been a bad idea to stick a stir stick in there and give it a stir first but I just dunked it in to see what it would turn out like. Now I'm taking my pot and holding it from my little stir stick and I'm just giving it a dip. In retrospect I probably should have just left it after the one dip because it had a really nice finish to it but I wanted to cover the whole pot so I dipped it again and as you can see, I got these little water bubbles the second time I dipped it. And then I had this one white spot left, which stressed me out. So I dipped it one more time. And just one more thing regarding dumping out the leftover paint. Just take your stir stick and you can just grab all that paint and then that's not gonna go down your drain. So you can just uh, dump out the water and the garbage bag and the stir stick will, ha will end up with most of the paint. Here is the reveal from the first paint dip pot and I have to say I kind of like the way it turned out in the end. Um, even with the overlapping layers and the little white spots it kind of looks like ocean-like. So I gave this pot a coat of silver metallic rust-oleum and although I have had a lot of success with spray paint on the terracotta pots, it seems that the metallic paints form kind of a powdery coating and then rub off. So easy solution to this, I just gave it a coat of clear gloss and that kept the paint from rubbing off. 
I'll be using these butterfly stickers that I think complement the silver paint very nicely. I'm just going to pick one that fits my pot, and again, if you're using a larger pot, you can adjust accordingly or use multiple butterfly stickers on a larger pot. These stickers are actually very sticky. With a lot of the stickers I use, I often supplement the glue with either hot glue or with E6000, but these stickers are really sticky and so no need in this case. I just stuck it directly onto the pot. I also decided to make use of the matching stickers since they've already done all the work for me. And I'm adding a row of the straight gems around the top of the rim. I'm actually using a recycled terracotta pot for this project. This one's previously been painted in a couple different colors and before giving it a coat of flat black and acrylic paint, I gave it a pretty good sanding all over to get some of the other paint off because it had actually had a coat of spray paint on it. Here is what it looks like after three coats of black paint. I'm going to be using this transfer. This is a piece of a larger transfer and it's actually a little leftover piece and I thought it would work quite nicely on the size and shape of this pot. These are decor transfers. This is from Redesign by Prima. So this is what the larger transfer looks like when you first get it. There's usually two sheets and they're quite large. They're intended to be used on furniture and walls and things like that. I'm going to insert a picture of the vanity project that I used this on. First you're going to want to figure out which way you want your transfer while the backing is still on so it's not going to stick to anything. Then I'm going to peel off the backing and it's actually fairly sticky so you want to not let it get stuck to anything because sometimes it'll peel off bits of the transfer. As you can see this one's actually missing a little piece and that's why I'm just using it as a leftover piece for this project. So you're going to want to lay it onto the pot wherever you want it and it will start to stick so make sure you've got it where you want it before you start pressing it down. It's a good idea to use a little piece of masking tape to hold it in place so it doesn't slip while you're doing or you're burnishing off the transfer. I'm just going to trim off this excess piece here because it's not laying flat on the pot because of uh, the rim of the pot. And another piece of tape to hold down the other side. This little burnishing stick comes with the transfer. You could easily use a popsicle stick or something that doesn't have a sharp edge on it. And then basically you just start to rub the transfer off. You can start to see here that the transfer is coming away from the backing and adhering to the pot. So now I'm just going to peel it back to see if the transfer is transferring onto the pot, which it is. And you want to be careful when you're peeling it off because if it's not fully attached to the pot, it'll actually just, it'll, it'll come up loose and then it might rub off. So you want to rub it as you go and just keep pulling the plastic backing off. Once everything's stuck down, then you can remove the backing. And just make sure that everything is nicely adhered down to your pot. You can just do this by checking with your fingers. Here's what it looks like. Don't worry about the areas where you can see the outline of the stencil. We're going to fix that up. Now I'm going to take this out into my garage and give it a coat of varnish. I'm applying a coat of clear gloss varnish to the outside of the pot. You don't have to use gloss, you can use matte as well. Gloss was just what I happened to have on hand. Once the varnish is applied, you can't see the transfer edges at all anymore. Because 
because the furniture transfers can be a bit pricey, I thought I'd provide you with a cheaper alternative from the Dollar Tree. So this pot's been given a coat of Rust-Oleum in Sea Mist. It's a spray paint, a metallic spray paint. And these transfers are from the Dollar Tree. So I've just picked a piece that I want from the transfer and then cut it out using scissors. Now that I've got my piece cut out, similarly to the last transfer, I'm just going to peel the backing off and place it where I want it on the pot. I'm just going to rub this off lightly with my burnishing stick. When I'm peeling back the sticker, just to check and see if the transfer is coming off and if part of it is still staying attached, you just go back and rub it down a little bit more until it's well attached to the pot. Originally, I used black acrylic paint on this pot, but I would suggest for this project you switch to a high gloss spray paint for better adhesion with the washi tape. I'm using a nice fuchsia washi tape. You could do this in any color, but I really like the black with the fuchsia. I'm cutting the edge of the washi tape so it's got a nice straight edge to lay up against the rim of the pot. You want to keep that straight edge nice and clean against the top of the rim and then you're going to make sure your spacing between your stripes is really good. Snip it off and tuck it underneath the bottom of the pot. And then you're going to want to smooth down the washi tape so there's no air bubbles in it. And just continue on until you've made your way all the way around the pot and it looks fabulous. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I've linked up a couple more videos that I think you might also enjoy. If you have any suggestions for projects that you would like to see me do in the future, please let me know in the comments. Thanks again for stopping by and have a great day.